Now, there must have been something in the water in the Wallace household growing up. One family, three rugby superstars, all achieving caps and accolades for club, province, country and, of course, Lions Tours. Now, two of the three Wallaces are using their sporting prowess to break a world record and raise vital funds for a good cause. Please welcome David and Paul Wallace to the show. Hello, gents. Hello. Good to see you, boys. Uh, we're going to talk about this world record attempt in a few minutes, but David, you guys are already in the record history books. Uh, three brothers playing for the Lions. I mean, that's a handy one, David. Uh, it was a nice one. Unfortunately, it, it didn't happen altogether, um, so it was many, many years apart. Um, but yeah, look, it's, I suppose it's, it's great uh, something to look back on your careers and have something that's... It's a little bit different and uh, I think, you know, our parents could get a lot of pride out of it. Probably love it. a lot of free drinks as well, too. <laughs> <laughs> but like, Paul, were you just a nightmare on school sports days? It's like, oh, the Wallaces oh, are going to win everything come. again. Uh, no, my older brother, Richard, I remember uh, in school in Rochestown for a few years and he was a sixth year. Uh, he had a few, uh, when his name would be called up time after time uh, for from everything from the shot put to the sprinting. Uh, that's in the middle there. Uh, yeah, there was a few looks uh, uh, up to the end. I wasn't quite uh, in that sort of category. Uh, David, you're too far behind. I don't, I don't know if you're winning many awards on school days. <laughs> I, I just remember our mum winning uh, the, the mother's race. So I think that must have been where, where, where maybe some of the speed came from. Well, that, um, we're, we're all cheering her so loud. I think she, by about 10 not. years. Yeah. yeah, well, that, that outshines all your achievements. Mom it does. The, the mom exactly. race is well, yeah. well serious. There was a, on one of the tours, one of the Irish uh, tours in the Southern Hemisphere, Paul, Warren Gatland, he tried to get you to wear fake tan. What's that about? <laughs> that is a true story. In 1998, yeah, we were going on tour to South Africa and uh, uh, Gaddy had got, uh, we just played, we won a game under where we narrowly lost in France. Instead, France with a very good performance, we should have won the game. And uh, yeah, he thought um, his explanation to us was, well, we, uh, when you're coming down to New Zealand to play against the Waikato, you see the Celtic players, you know, you look quite anemic looking uh, in the middle of winter down there uh, after coming from our winter, don't look athletic, intimidating, whereas the, the Springboks or the Australians were tanned athletic and intimidating, so he put it out there. Uh, fortunately, only two of our players decided to put on the fake tan, and I can tell you it wasn't Lancome, it was... Uh, Orange gunk. They were uh, like two, six foot six on Palumpas. They didn't look well in, when they started sweating either. Um, it just came all streaky, you know. <laughs> Ooh, imagine washing those shorts. <laughs> <shirts. laughs> By the time it got to Donegal Callaghan, David, he was great with it. It was fine. He was teaching you all he how to do it, it, was he? Yeah, he. He, yeah, yeah. He, was, he, he probably was, he arrived with his own pads. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's yeah. yeah. should have been a brand ambassador. Uh, well, look, speaking of the Lions tour, it's happening in July, David. Uh, eight Irish players are in the squad. Who do you think uh, of the eight will make an impact? Well, I think they all have a good chance, really. Um, but uh, I, I suppose, you know, Furlong will be, will be right in there. Um, you know, he's obviously toured before and he... He's, um, you know, really world class. I think Ty Byrne has, uh, for me, in, in any team, um, in the world, I think he, he's he's a name to first go in there. I just think what he adds around the park, um, plus in the lineup. But he just he's a step above, um, and he just has an engine on him that just never never empties. So uh, I think he, he he'll go really really well. And you know, um, I think you know the fact that Bundyaki and, and Henshaw are, are you know a pairing for for uh, for Ireland, and obviously have played together in Connacht. You know that that could really help them. You know, make a partnership on the test mm -hmm. team as well too. But uh, yeah, everyone, everyone has a good chance, and uh, yeah, I think um, I think it should should be uh, hopefully a, a bright tour for from an Irish point of view. And Paul, we saw uh, Simon Zebo play his final game for Racing ninety two at the weekend when they lost to La Rochelle. He's coming home to Munster. What do you think? Like, I've got a big smile on my face about it. What do you think that's going to do yeah, for the squad? I, I love the way he plays, and uh, you know, Racing played a beautiful brand of rugby with Finn Russell, who's you know, really yeah. superstar number ten, who a very flair player. So he brings that uh, X factor. Racing don't seem to go the whole way when it comes to two big tournaments, though. Um, and I think that that's a professional. The flair is there, but um, you know I'd be very excited to see him get into the Irish setup. I think he still has a lot to offer. Um, there are probably sort of parts of his game that he'll need to improve under Andy Farrell because Keenan has been exceptional mm. since he's come into the Irish setup. Um, but you know that gives an extra bit of strength and depth uh, 
to Andy and the lads, and I'm sure I'll be keeping a good good eye on him. He's just a, a very gifted player and someone who can draw the fans in. I, I, I think he's a, he's a fan favourite, but also a pundit's favourite, I think, as well, because he gives you a lot of drama. Yeah. Yeah, he certainly does, and will certainly add, as you said, competition to the squad. Uh, David, I, I, like I'm sure, as Simon was leaving the field, he had to, you know, at least say hello uh, to his all Munster cohort and your all Munster cohort, Ronan O'Gara. He's had quite a time over the last couple of years, particularly this season at Rochelle, and the conversations will continue about when is he going to come home? Will he take charge of Munster? Will he take charge of Ireland? Uh, David, would he be mad to, or is it something that's just a natural progression? Ah, look, I, I'm sure, you know, he, he's, he's a driven guy and ultimately I'm sure he'd like to, to, to be coaching Ireland at some stage and perhaps Munster on that journey. But, you know, where he is at the moment, you know, we see how well they're doing um, in the European Cup final and, and now top 14 final as well. Um, and the team that he's built um, oh. is, is, you know, is, is quite a phenomenal team as we've seen. Um, and what he's done, I think, you know, going down to the Crusaders and just his whole uh, journey and becoming a, a coach and learning how to be a coach, uh, her learning how to build a culture within a team, I think, is, is uh, has been kind of very impressive. Um, and uh, I think anyone who, who's kind of looked at his journey would, would kind of say, well, look, that's the way you should do it, really. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm, I'm sure there'll, there'll come a point where he'd like to move home. Um, although you know a lot of his kids now are, are, are very French yeah. and, and know nothing, <laughs> nothing else, so it might might be hard to, to bring them back. But maybe they'll stay. Put in but a yeah, good word for us. It, send it, a, send the WhatsApp text from Munster. Come on, Raj, come home. <laughs> yeah. We certainly love to have him back. Anyway. Yeah. Well, we mentioned it at the start, Paul, and the reason why you're on to talk to us is because you boys are attempting to break a world record. Now we've heard rumours that you've already broken it in training, which is a good sign, or is that added pressure? <laughs> uh, broken training, I don't know. We were going out of pace, which was okay, but that was for about an hour session. This is 24 hours, so um, I think it's the case of uh, how we can keep that going. Um, you talk about today being the longest day, that'll be the longest day and longest night. Um, 10 a.m. on Saturday morning to, to 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. It's uh, going to be take a lot of digging in. We're going to do it in three hour intervals. There's 20 of us, so it'll be 10 on at a time. So it'll be on every five or six minutes and it'll be the equivalent of doing a, a 200 meter sprint and then coming back every six minutes to do that for three hours, then take a break. And uh, I think one of the big issues will be uh, I think the first three hours and for each of the, 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 the sets of 10 will be, you know, should be fine. The second one, and especially the third one in the middle of the night, that, that's going to be really tough. After some of these training sessions, uh, for three, four days afterwards, the legs are still heavy. So having to go on three hours later and then, uh, you know, on for yeah. three and then another three hours, that's going to be really, really tough. And uh, yeah, I think it probably the toughest challenge I've, I've ever had to do. And uh, I think all this, no one's been involved in one of these before. So even though there's some great former international rowers, um, a lot of international players who have still kept themselves quite fit. Uh, I think it's it's a massive challenge, and we're all getting a little bit anxious and nervous. But uh, it's it's great to be in that competitive environment, a bit like um, being back on a rugby tour where everyone is pulling in together and uh, the banter on WhatsApp has all been great. And uh, yeah, yeah, everyone's uh, posting their scores. Everyone's been trying to outdo each other. But I think when it comes to it, it'll be a case of trying not to. To, to, to go as hard as you can without getting injured or pulling something because it is an over 40s record. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're not spring chickens anymore, albeit the likes of David there might be close to it. Well, okay. I'm just sitting there, David's we're like, hey, 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 hey. I'm very close to 40, don't mind, don't mind this. But I'm just wondering, David, because you've got, you know, former players involved like Malcolm O'Kelly. Is there a bit of ribbing then, you know, with the Munster Leinster thing? Because you're all going to be on these rowing machines. I know it's for a good cause, but you, you want to try to beat each other. Ah, no, I think we'll all, we'll all be competitive. We all want to do our best, but we all know as well. I think if you can be silly, as Paul is saying, and go a little bit too hard, and 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 you know, us grand in the first hour, but in the twenty third <laughs> hour, it mightn't be great. So uh, yeah, I think we'll be, we'll all be wanting to do our best, but kind of with an eye on on the the, the final prize and, and and getting over the line. Um, because it'll be much harder if we if we lose numbers throughout it. But Mal has a Mal has a massive advantage anyway with his height. Yeah. You know, he's he's. he's 
it's all about levers, and then he's got it in abundance. So yeah, I <laughs> yeah. probably need two cans of fake tamales. You will. Well, I just love the way you'll be back into the ice baths. Uh, it's been a few years, but they'll be back into the ice. This is the longest day, 24-hour a world record attempt. Saturday, the 26th of June. All donations will be split evenly be, uh, between Friends of Cross and the IRFU Charitable Fund. You can go to JustGiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash Rugby Rowers 2021. Info up there. Paul and David Wallace, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. Take care. Fair play to them. Fair play yeah. to them. My God.